What's up, nerdlings? What's up, nerdlings? Do you nerd for Mo GameCon? Man didn't just do book covers, he did game covers too. Sir, what are these? I know. These don't look like Genesis. What What am I doing? That's a weird way to spell uh, Sega Genesis. I'm sorry, we're not going to let you back in the B&B tonight at all. We don't know who you are. I know. What am I thinking? <laughs> so I'm the Retro Beard, or Adam, whichever one you want to call me. Uh, these guys stop by to check out the cassette cases that I make for games that you get loose pretty often, uh, like Turbo Graphics. Oh my gosh. It it's just so, so beautiful. Good. My favorite of that one is on the spine, the Splatterhouse Drift Down. Nice. It goes over the edge. I have some for Switch, Game Boy, pretty much any of the handheld um, Nintendo stuff. I do all the art and make all the uh, J cards for them. And then I make a bunch of light signs and everything that these guys can check out. Easiest way to find me is Instagram at the Retro Beard. I always use more of these, right? What did you find? Splatoon! I really should play this game, considering I'm so attracted to all the Splatoon stuff. Alright, without further ado, let's have a random encounter! Alright, so here are your categories for today. So category number one is the question block. This is going to be like your mixed bag of trivia, so anything goes here. Man's best friend is going to be Doggos in Gaming. So these are famous gaming doggos. It, it's going fantastic. Um, really good turnout, really busy. Great, great stuff.
Oh. Coolest thing you found today? Just the one game I had. Just the one game? Yeah, I just saw. <laughs> well, that's not it. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Caleb Webb. I've got an ambitious project. It's called the Build the Mansion Project, and it's inspired by the uh, original uh, Spencer Mansion from Resident Evil. This project started uh, about a little less than a year ago and we have a very ambitious goal to build the main hall of the mansion by 2026. If you want to find us on Facebook it is at um, Build the Mansion Resident Evil Tournament or YouTube at Build the Mansion. We're on Patreon as well. Uh, but this isn't about money right now. This is literally about getting the word out about the project so other people can um, we can start a fire of passion uh, just like in me and and uh, I really do believe we will build the mansion all right thank you so much have a great day I need the stuff we heard the story behind why he dressed like that and we fell in absolute love he identifies with his character as a father he put a ton of work into that Congratulations. Two years in a row, Billy Craddock, first place in Cosmic Mantis. Welcome back. Hopefully you enjoyed getting to see a little bit of Mo GameCon. First of all, let's talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> that place was packed. Could not fit an elephant in that room. Uh, that's the truth. <laughs> I, it's It's been said numerous times throughout all their social we're media. We're not going to harp on it. Uh, yeah, we're not going to harp on it. Uh, a series of events led it to where they couldn't be in their general you know, venue. They had to go someplace new. It wasn't quite conducive for it and everything. But you know what? We still survived. We found some fun stuff. More importantly, we hung out with some great people. I was just going to say, I didn't see what the big deal was. I mean, I've got a mountain. So whenever I wanted somewhere, <laughs> I just did this. It's just, All right, go. Me. <laughs> Hopefully next year, maybe they'll have a little more space. Maybe back in the original place. I uh, really, really hope it's so. But regardless of that, the, the people that we got to meet up with, we actually stayed at a new to us Airbnb, yes. which we really enjoyed. Great layout there. Oh my God. All right, so we got mustard flavored soda brought to us by Lester's Fixins. <laughs> no, I can smell yeah. some like mustard in there. Yeah. Oh, it's not gonna be good. That's not a good face. It's <laughs> not good. <clears throat> it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> but I will drink the whole thing just for you. The first night that we were in town, we did our traditional White Castle. We did. Feast. We did. I even had earrings and a necklace to go along for the occasion. I dressed up. And we managed to actually do it. Achievement unlocked. Bing! We're in the 100 Club with White Castle. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we had less people at 
the we did. We had too. less time eating it, but I think it was the fact that we did it the night before. So when we came back from the convention that night after playing games all night, people started getting hungry, and it was <laughs> the perfect snack. Put your lipstick on. <laughs> when we went to the convention, uh, again, super crowded, but we found some fun things there. I'm the worst at conventions. There's generally never anything that I'm looking for. It's kind of whatever weirdness catches my eye. In fact, the only game that I did pick up was the City of Final Fantasy on PSP, which is funny because as many of you know, exactly, I won't <laughs> play it because I don't play handheld games. My hands don't work too well on them, but it was Final Fantasy, it was complete, and it was a very nice price. We did get some fun stuff from the Retro Beard. I love the coasters that he made. We've got a GameCube, we've got a Chocobo, and this Sonic one may not be staying with us, actually. I think these are great, they look amazing. My only complaint that I have about them is the fact that it is indented, I guess you could say, or whatever, the cutout. I feel like if you filled it with clear resin, it might be better because I, I am clumsy and I know I will set my drink in the wrong spot and it'll just tip over. See, I was thinking more all the condensation as it goes in there. When you go to pick yeah. it up, you'll fling it across too. the room. I just feel like maybe some clear resin would, would uh, just help them out. To go along with that Sonic, uh, we actually got something for a buddy of ours who's been looking for a Mega Man Amiibo. So there's that too. And you even found an interesting figure. I did. I found me a black suit Spider-Man. He was kind of hard to get a hold of. I can't remember if he was an exclusive to one of the stores or they just didn't have very many of them, but he was really hard to get a hold of. And then they re-released him only in the set. So you had to either buy the, the set, which was the game and all that other stuff again. It was very hard to find him individually. And he does go for a lot online. And I found him in a bin where he was $2. Yeah, all day, every day, all day, right? Every day, yeah. <laughs> that was a great find. So again, I really wasn't looking for games, but I've actually been having fun collecting some demo discs. I got this nice Konami preview disc for the PS2. PS2 was kind of like that last time you really got demo discs. I think there was like uh, one or two on the PS3, but you didn't really see them much after that. Over on the PS1, I got a PlayStation Underground Jam Pack. Now, things like this, I just really love collecting them because not only do you get some of those gameplay moments, but you get some trailers, and it's just kind of a look back in history. A couple for the Dreamcast, these generator discs. I'm trying to recall if these were like the ones that came with the magazine or if you had to get them otherwise. I didn't follow a whole lot of Dreamcast stuff at that time, so... Someone will have to school me on that. <laughs> and then I got a couple of PlayStation Underground 2.3 and 2.4. Now the 2.3 has Spyro the Dragon right there on it. And there's a little ad for Medieval on the back. And 2.4, it's just a, a duo of discs. Again, looking forward to checking those out and reliving some of the heyday of CD gaming. Because it was cool, it's like, there's a video on this disc. Look, it's not the same when you go into the PlayStation Network store and just pull up a trailer. It's, it's not as fun. <laughs> 
something that is fun, plushies. Of course. So I got me a little Louie. He's not Olimar, so looking for Olimar. But he goes along with my other Pikmin plushies just fine. And I'm enjoying playing the new re-release of Pikmin 1 and 2 on the Switch. So I'll hold him while I'm playing. That's pretty cute. That's I got two more plushies. I know. <laughs> you never cease to amaze me with the plushies you It would find. not be a convention without leaving with a plushie of some kind. <laughs> I got two of the same kind. I got a pink and yellow squid inklings from uh, Splatoon because I've still never played the game. Still don't know if it's a fun game, but I am obsessed with the decorations to go along with my Switch. It just goes to show you don't have to be a fan of something to nope. collect for it. You can just think it's adorable. To be fair, I have always liked octopus, octopi. There were a lot of tables that had manuals, and anytime I could, I would kind of flip through them. I grabbed one for myself. I don't think I had one for Super Dodgeball. Fun fact, Super Dodgeball on the NES was the first video game I ever beat by myself, so that'd be fun to have the manual. I did pick up another manual, but I gifted that to someone. However, I'm in no short supply of reading material because I have a Super Mario World Nintendo Adventure book. I think these are great. If you were a video game fan back in the day and you just wanted more of that game world lore, then here you go. Plus, it's not just story. I mean, there's all kinds of fun activities to do in here, too. Because you need activities in a book? To get kids to read who normally play video games? <laughs> it's not a bad idea. I got a lapel pin because I enjoy collecting these, putting them either on corkboard or my backpacks. And this one was a little different. Um, it's a little little crossover between Jason and Mario, and uh, he was headhunting. Little Bowser headhunting there, so that's fun. We also got a lovely little Link pin from Show Me Retro. I guess he knows that we love Zelda stuff or something. Or something like that. This is for you. Do you have that over And just a couple of merch pins from the immortal John Hancock, who, by the way, finally got his picture with the barrel. <laughs> Speaking of Zelda stuff, we got some uh, Zelda, I think they're gummies? Yeah, you, you gummy think, slimes. In there? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we'll be busting into those because, I mean, we're not going to just leave them sealed. So stay tuned. <laughs> we love crafty things. Yes. You've had your eye on figures like this for a while. I think we've seen them before. Yes. Perler bead creations are so fascinating to me. I can't fathom how someone can can eyeball something and make something really cool like that. But I love this crossover between Ninja Turtles and Pac-Man. And the fact that Pac-Man is a pizza is just awesome. I love it. A little bit, little fun magnets for the for the front door. Speaking of Pac-Man, got a lovely little Miss Pac-Man, one of those old school wind up toys from the 80s and her mouth goes wang 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 and she's chewing on a ghost. Now, I noticed it's in its package, so are you still debating whether or not she's coming out of there? I don't know. This might be difficult. It is from 1982, so it is 40 years old, <laughs> and it has survived Ouch. in this package for 40 years. We'll have to see. One big draw for me, since I wasn't exactly game hunting, I was looking at the magazines that they had there and the strategy guides. There were a lot there of them. There was a plethora of those things. Generally, we go to a convention yeah. and there's like one table with one box, mm -hmm. if you're lucky. But yeah, MoGameCon had a lot. lots of different booths with lots of bins full of, full of these things, and you were just having a good old time. While I am trying to go for the first 100 issues, I did grab some of the later ones because, of course, they have Zelda covers. You've got one for Skyward Sword. You've got one for Spirit Tracks. You've got one for... Who's this guy? Oh, that's Dragon Quest IX. I mean, I love my Dragon Quest, so of course I'm going to get something with that on there. And I grabbed this one because I wasn't too keen on that price point before, but the table started to have a half price sale near the end of the day. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll get that for Four Swords Adventures. Why not? I did add one magazine to that first 100. Nintendo Power issue number 91 with Killer Instinct Gold. So... Now it's just those super early issues I've got to find. Oh, I'm sure you guys know why I got this one. I don't even know what Ultra Game Players is, but it was 
the swimsuit edition. Hey, Laura Croft, remember those pixels? Yeah. Jeez, Tom, do you perv? Okay. I was enjoying looking at them too. Pretty sure Queen of the Yanks is a different thing. Found a really neat find, and what makes it even neater, I suppose, or more frustrating, you and I cannot find a dagum thing on this. No, we cannot. I found this really neat messenger bag. It is missing the strap, but that's not a big deal. It is old, it is used, well used, but it's from Pac-Man Studio. There's no tag, there's no nothing in it. We've Google goggled it, we have Googled it, we have done everything. We cannot find anything about this. So let us know if you know what it's from, if it's maybe not that old, because like with it being so well worn, yeah. it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell how old it is. I just meant like it's old, worn old. I got one more bag. This one is a really cool duffel bag, but this is one of those bags that I love to get and carry that you unzip this and it all folds up into its own little pouch and they're perfect for backpacks, back pockets, suitcases, barrels, but it's a really nice big duffel. So it's actually helped us bring home some stuff. This lady knows her stuff so well. <laughs> yeah. The guys that you're asking were like, ah, I think it's vintage. What is it? 82, 88? And you had to yeah. let them know. He came quite. over and he goes, I don't know, man. We can't find anything on it. So we're not really sure. What do you think? And I opened it up and I said, well, there's a, there's a tag in here for culture fly so i guarantee you it's not vintage because they I could, they were off in the corner talking and i could hear him and he goes oh well oh, yeah uh, um, yeah and i was like so there it came in one of those mystery boxes the entire box was 30 dollars, so i'll give you five bucks for it <laughs> and he goes well he looks it up online and he goes well they're going for 15 and i said so 10 and he goes yeah sure <laughs> yeah I 82 been, or 88 mm -hmm. i would have been like well if it's going for 15 go sell for 15. <laughs> <laughs> i picked up the volume one and volume two of Final Fantasy Legend of the Crystals. This was the anime back when we didn't have any other Final Fantasy anime or movies or anything else. And no Crunchyroll? <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> precisely. You had to be lucky if you could find these tapes somewhere. Like, I remember the first time I saw this in a store, probably at the mall, and I was like, wait, what? It's a Final Fantasy anime? <laughs> of course, back in the day, since it was, you know, anime and special, I think it was like 50 bucks Oof. for the tape. So I was like, yeah, I, I can't afford are that. Are these dubbed or subbed? Do you know? These are the English dubbed version. Obviously, that's hit or miss. You don't have to read all the subtitles, but it depends on how well those actors nail those lines. Yeah, that's true. What do you guys think? Question of the video when it comes to your anime, subs or dubs? Also, when it comes to your steps, two or dubs? Dude, stop. I got me a big oh plushie. Oh my gosh, Look. why do you keep getting the big plushies? Because I love them and I never got big plushies as a child. <laughs> it looks like Ice Mario, and he's so big, you must have paid like 30, 40, maybe 50 bucks for him. I paid 10 bucks for him, and he wasn't on sale. I got me a giant Mario. He's as big as my head. <laughs> he's in amazing shape. He's not dirty, and he's actually plush. Not that weird, like, sawdust stuff that you would see. So, I'm very happy with this little guy. <laughs> Think about that's someone that we probably could have used at the convention keeping us cool. Like, yo, Mario, ice ball me. That would have been nice. <laughs> I grabbed the Legendary World of Zelda. So this is the ultimate unofficial guide. Nice thing was, I got this book for like five bucks, I think. It which looks like it's a good condition, too. It's less than what the retail was. Yeah, it is really really in good condition and i love how it goes through the history of the games you've got the console entries you've got the handhelds and stuff nice big pictures sometimes that looks a little wonky with some of the handhelds but this was kind of the uh the hyrule historia before you got the hyrule historia okay. unofficially of course <laughs> i got me something zelda related i got the sleeve from tears of the kingdom the sleeve so this was a pre-order item at GameStop. It was GameStop. GameStop, yes. So you could pick either, some. well, some GameStops gave you the plaque and the sleeve. Some made you choose. Ours made us choose. We chose the plaque. So we missed out on the sleeve, but one table had it, and I asked them how much, and they go, for you, nothing. Take it. 
So that was nice of him. One last Zelda item that we got came as a complete surprise because no one expected Gary of Rock Solid to show up, but he did. He did show up. Not only did he surprise us with his presence, he surprised us with presents. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know you guys have your wall of Zelda. Yes. Just a little bit of Just Zelda a little thing. bit of a wall of Zelda. So I made you something. Like, I didn't buy you something. I made you something with my own little hands and creativity. These are the first two I have ever produced in one. This is the only variant that will ever exist. Oh. So. Oh my God. Now, because you don't keep nice things, she gets the one of one. Oh, oh, I see. And that is the only green shelled version that will ever be produced. Can I have that? No, you get the black one. I <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Thank you. You drove all this way just for us. But primarily for you guys. This one's just mine. All mine. I'm not sharing it with anybody. No. Yeah. Thanks, Gary. You made it very clear that she gets the green one. I just get the, <laughs> the plain Jane one. But these have a nice little USB plug. Plug them in. They light up. They're they look really bright. Great. They're amazing. And I mean, just look at how nice these little signs look anyway. Mm -hmm. And best of all, I mean, come on, he knows the Zelda fans, so he definitely sent these to the best home. Just saying. Yes, he did. So, thank you, Gary. Drove all the way just to give these to us. It wasn't for any other reason. He wasn't there for anyone else. Nope, just us. Just us. So thank you. That was very sweet of you. One more Splatoon thing. <laughs> you really need to play these. I really, really do. But I got a fun uh, controller holder because I love collecting these because I will I refuse to play the stupid whatever mode that is with the tiny little controller. So as many of these that I can find because I am collecting all of the different colored Joy-Cons. So I need the things to go in them. And I really like this one because it had the cool color on it, but I actually like the dual uh, color in the back, the black and the green. Plus the green almost has a texture. It does. It's, it's like a, nice... a rubberized texture to it, so it feels really comfortable. Yeah, good grip. You're yeah. not going to lose that. And then the last thing we got at the convention was given to us. Build the Mansion Project. This is great. You got Charlie's signature there with itchy, tasty, and some blueprints of the mansion itself. I get that now. <laughs> So that was a cool piece to have. Definitely something to put up in a frame and try to find some wall space somewhere. Yeah. Now, the funny thing is, before the convention, instead of like pre-gaming, we did like some pre-collecting because yeah, we had to kill some time we before we could get in. We stopped at a Target. You found some things. I did. You know what I can't stand in department stores? Toy sections and those spoiled children that are just grabbing whatever they want. It's just my stuff. This is Pimp Kirby. I found a really super cute little Hot Wheels um, Spider-Man in the spider buggy, which love the spider buggy. I got me a new Marvel Legends. I got Emma Frost. I absolutely love her. I don't have this version of Emma Frost. It's the new one, and she's got blue lipstick, which I absolutely find appealing. How much of a comic book nerd do you have to be when you're like, well, I've got Emma Frost, but I don't have this one. You telepathic. That's like the people that buy all the variant covers. Yeah. yeah. And then this probably weighs 50,000 pounds. It's a lot of plastic. But it was on clearance, and love me, my blue Yoshi is my favorite, and then there's purple and yellow Yoshi. You want a bit of the yellow? Well, I have some of the, um, some of the yellow, and don't get cheap on me. <laughs> we even got some stuff on the way home. Naturally, we stopped at our candy place and got some treats there. But we also took... Peter of Waves and Games to a winery because that's just not a place that he goes. No. But we forced him to go along with us and we brought home a lovely pineapple mango. This was amazing. They were doing a tasting. I tasted it and I looked at Tom and I said, yeah, we're going home with a bottle of that. So St. James Winery, folks. It's a really good local winery. We also got some creamed honey because it is a coffee creamed 
Honey, I think some of the suggestions it had was uh, put it on like your pancakes, your waffles, waffles and everything. Toast. So beyond just your toast. Mm -hmm. But we like kind of the consistency, the sweetness of cream bunny. Yes. And I love coffee. So yeah, lots of fun stuff. Lots of treats. More importantly though, some good time spent with some good friends. Getting to hang out at the Airbnb was great. We also hit up a couple of restaurants, just had a good little bit of fellowship, meeting up with people that we generally don't get to see all mm -hmm. that often. Is that real acid? Yes. The goggles, they do nothing. The goggles, they do nothing. Convention time is about the only time we get to all come together. I discovered I enjoy pineapple cider. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's one of those things we always push that the convention is only part of it. You know, the, the conventions themselves are fun. Even when they're super packed, it's yes. still, you yeah. know, like make the best of it, people. Everyone else is super packed in there, like yeah. sardines yeah. with you. Uh, <laughs> no one's having a good time being packed in, but they are having a good time looking for games and hanging out with the friends. Mo Game Con, how is it? It's busy and packed. Sean? We are sardines right now. Cap? This might be worse than Wind Waker. <laughs> well, I found I got my grave. Well said. <laughs> And that's really what we love. I think best that's about why we love Mo GameCon so much is because it's literally a one day convention and we always make a nice weekend out of it. Everybody that's comes true. in on Friday, conventions on Saturday, and then we all leave sometime on Sunday. But it gives us all that extra time to hang out and game without having to worry about, oh, are we missing convention time? Very true. So that's one of the reasons why Mo GameCon is one of our favorites. They're good ships and they're wood ships and they're ships that sail the sea. But the sh best ships are the friendships, and may they ever be. Ooh, Ooh, nice. yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> oh And also, one last pickup that we got are these amazing shirts. Oh right, yeah. Look at the <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Buster Sword there. Yeah, it, actually, and it's a nice shirt too. Mm -hmm, it's good quality. Like, I forgot all about it. I know it. you forgot you were wearing a new shirt. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I mean, I love Final Fantasy VII stuff, and the Buster Sword so iconic. So yeah, you gotta <laughs> rock the merch. But uh, anyway, hopefully, Mo Game Con will be in their other location or a new location or just set up you know make it a little easier to get around in mm -hmm. there because everyone wants to buy a bunch of stuff probably too much yes. stuff and hopefully you guys will check out the next mo game con if you are able to yeah let so, us know if you're going to go to the next one we might be able to hook yeah, up yeah yeah please do meet us up there uh what's something that you love to serve people that we meet up at conventions well the uh lady Lacey's famous peanut butter and jelly shots after all <laughs> that was good that was really good so, all right, leave some comments down below on the stuff that we picked up about the convention. Let us know if you were there. Sorry if we missed you. There were just a few people there. Just a few. But, uh, yeah. All right, I'm going to go brush up on some age-old Nintendo Power news now. Okay, well, maybe maybe I'll actually go buy this game and give it a shot. There you go. Perfect time. You got controllers, I got the controller you got the plushies. And the plushies to play it with, so let's go. We'll see you next time, nerdlings. Bye, nerdlings. So actually, actually, Sean, Tony, Tony, Sean had a great segment idea. All right. So here's your chance. Sell him, sell him the idea. Pitch it. So a channel where I buy Nintendo powers with mailing labels and track down the people. And the name? Retro Stalker. Um, I would watch. <laughs> sure. To see if I go to jail. Yes. <laughs> that's no sun. That's a death star. <laughs> Time to limbo. <laughs> I know, right? It's like a big egg yolk in the sky. Pass these lights enough time. I'm about to be getting pretty good at it. Limbo, limbo, limbo. Oh. <laughs> don't, I was going to say, don't do that. You're going to fall over. I can't limbo. Fart, fart. Snickerdoodle shit. Puppycock. Oh my god, John. You can't my pants. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to say so. It's not a drinking game. Those two guys that were the Contrary Twins. <laughs> I'll show you. No, I'll show you. God damn it, stop jerking each other off. <laughs> I did get a couple of later episodes. 
Ready? I called them episodes instead of issues, anyway. Did I? Yeah. I guess Sean Urban and you yawning. <laughs> Simply because <laughs> they have Zelda. <laughs> we haven't even got to that big up yet. <laughs> I know. I just noticed that Dragon Quest had a slime in the title. Good eye. That's cute. I love slimes. I'll do the two bags. Okay. Hang on, that made me dizzy. <laughs> I thought you were a baby. I don't know what I'm doing. I play trumpet. That doesn't have strings. Alright, so. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> See into his eyes. Into his eyes. It's not 36 though, but 12 and 12 is 24. <laughs> That's why I was like, no, not 36. Listen, I, this is why I work here. <laughs>